gainers. I did wear gainers. Um, I wore actually I wore a lot of different things. Yeah. Did you ever like find your yeah. shoe? No, I never what? found like my shoe. Hey, it's Josephine from The Point Shop. Today I fitted Mika Fogarty. There is a lot of mutual fangirl going on because <laughs> I've been watching Mika for a very long time and apparently she's been watching us. So <laughs> there was very much this mutual love and fandom. It was really fun to hear Miko talk because a lot of dancers are going through what she has gone through and I've gone through exactly what she has gone through as well. So Miko is one of those dancers that grew up in the public eye. She was on first position. She was very well known in our ballet circle because she's won a lot of competitions. And she was one of those dancers that we all just kind of watched and said, wow, she has it all. She is beautiful, not only as a dancer, but as a human being. She just fit everything that you would want for a dancer. So we were all just waiting to see her debut in the ballet world. So it was a complete shock when we heard that she was going to go to school instead. So there is this thing um, in the ballet world that's a very difficult decision to make when you're very young. So if you are in dance your whole life, Right around when you're 15 or 16 years old, you kind of have to make this decision whether or not you're going to go into the ballet world full time or if you're going to go to school. And we thought that she was going to go the traditional route of going to be a trainee, become a professional dancer, become a soloist, become a principal ballerina. And that's usually the path that we would expect from someone like Miko. But instead, she made this decision to go to college instead. I wasn't like, loving my time on stage mm -hmm. and you know all of that hard work in the studio and sacrifice and all of that is like for your moment on stage and like the gratification and the amazing joy that you would hope to feel on stage mm -hmm. but i did not feel that when i was on stage and once i started realizing that then i was like that's your job as a ballet dancer is dancing on stage yeah. rehearsing all of that so uh, that's when I started to think about other careers. I think it did feel a little bit like a burnout because I was just tired of not loving my body, I think. Mm -hmm. That was part of it. I always, there was always something I did not like about my body and that like started from when I was really young and I was just kind of tired of feeling that way and I felt that if I continued in ballet, I just would not be satisfied both like physically and mentally. So that was part of it for sure for me um, and then just in combination with not feeling at home on the stage as well. So I guess like a lot of things came together. So when I asked Miko if she had either regretted or um, if it was a difficult decision to make, she said that the most difficult part of that decision was to announce it publicly because everyone expected her to go into the professional ballerina route including myself. I had so many amazing experiences as a ballet dancer, so I felt even more at peace to do something else in my life, you know, like have a next chapter. Yeah. So it was like a big decision for me, but when I finally came to the conclusion of that, then it felt very like right for me. But um, what was harder for me was actually like opening up to the whole ballet world about it, because, you know, I was um, in first position, I was like doing all these competitions. I was like bigger on social media, so I felt like so many people expecting me to continue and all of that. So it was very hard for me to open up. But uh, it like literally took I think like two years for me to announce anything on social media or do any interviews. So that was definitely the toughest part for me because some of like the ballet world can be very like critical, and as I'm sure you know, so. Uh, that was definitely the most challenging part for me. So when she announced that she was going to go, she was afraid of how the public would respond to that decision. But she said, luckily, most people were very supportive. She felt like the ballet world was still behind her, that she didn't have to leave it completely. And even though she went to college and she isn't dancing as much anymore, she certainly is still part of our ballet world because she's teaching classes. Uh, she's part of the conversation in the ballet world and also a role model for dancers who have danced their entire lives and feel fearful of leaving it. 
whether you're a professional dancer that has been dancing professionally for 15 years or a dancer who grew up dancing their entire lives and have to make a decision between college and going into a ballet company, we all go through that same fear of leaving something that's so familiar. And her path is leading her towards a medical degree. I'm able to bring a new perspective to different aspects in health and medicine and also yeah when I was a dancer I prefer to see a doctor who had a background in dance or at least a background in like athletics but even that was sometimes difficult like yeah it was hard to find doctors like that that could empathize with dancers you know we have this we have a slightly different mindset in terms of injuries and so I hope to be able to do that in the future, maybe work with dancers, we'll see. But I haven't made up my mind right. about my specialty yet, so I don't know yet. But yes. it'd be yeah, great to work with dancers for sure and kind of bring bring my past like chapter of dance and just combine those those two aspects of my life would be amazing. The thing that really struck me was that there seemed to have absolutely no regret in leaving ballet because that's always something that's so difficult to do no matter what level you reached in ballet to let go of something that was part of your life, your entire life. She's worked so hard. She was homeschooled so that she can dance all day long. And uh, she was really going towards this path of becoming a professional dancer. But to completely change course and go to a very different path that you didn't consider before is one of the most courageous things that you can do, and to be able to make that decision when you're so young must be so difficult. Yeah, I think I had a pretty like unique childhood. I did um, most of my middle and high school online, so I was not prepared for college at all. Like I had literally no idea what to expect. Literally had to watch like what to bring to you school like on your first day. Like I was like, do I bring a laptop or like a notebook? Like what am I supposed to bring to my classes? But yeah, I watched like what what's in my backpack videos on YouTube. I like came from this whole ballet bubble where I knew a lot about ballet and I had literally no idea about college or anything else. But she said that all of that discipline that she had in ballet beautifully transitioned over when she started to go to school because she said when you're dancing ballet it's the same thing. You put in the work, you put in the time and the effort and you see the results one day. And that kind of patience is learned from doing something that's very difficult over and over again your whole life. So regardless of if you continue to dance ballet or if you go into a different world or a different profession or you go to learn a different skill, all of that discipline and that patience really transfers over. And that's something that is very difficult to grasp when you're leaving something like ballet because when you leave ballet you think, you danced your whole life, you put in so many hours into this thing, and you feel like everything that you put into it is just a waste. But what you have to realize is that everything that you work for transitions, and it works and it helps, and especially with Mika going into the medical field, that's going to be an experience and a background that most people in the medical world do not have. So she's going to bring in a fresh perspective, a fresh new way of looking at things from a dancer's perspective. So I am looking forward to seeing her blossom and to do amazing thing in the medical world. And if she decides not to go into medicine, I'm sure in whatever she does, she's going to excel because everything that you learn in ballet is going to transition and permeate throughout her whole life. If you like this video, hit subscribe, hit that like button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell because all of those things help us out. If you'd like to get some merch, you can go on our website. And if you're a dancer that wants to get a virtual fitting, then you can sign up for a virtual fitting on the description box. All of that is going to be on the link below, and don't forget to comment if you have any questions. I'll see you guys later. That's a good thing about gainers, it's like you just wear it indefinitely. I know, I know, I know. again, <laughs> 10 years later, like, ah, oh, they're <laughs> still good, I guess. You can um, just have, hold this behind you and then, okay, okay, okay. yeah, stand in first position, and then you can bring your left foot up on point. Yes, press up on both feet. So it's been four years since you've been consistently dancing on the Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's been four years. Yeah. So did you only feel pain on your big, uh, on your bunion, or did you feel it pain anywhere else? Mostly bunion, but with gainers, I actually got a lot of heel blisters too. Yeah. So it's a pretty hard satin. If I ever did like Odalise and I danced on stage with like 
in the tights, which yeah. I sometimes did. I would always have to like take my heels yeah. every time I rehearsed with no tights because um, yeah. I'd get blisters on my heels all the time. They are sitting pretty tight on your feet. Yeah, also, I think they weren't as tight before when I was dancing. Yeah. Dancing. <laughs> I think your feet shrink then. Some people yeah. they swell and then some people shrink. Yeah. Can you go up on point for me? Just... Yeah. Yeah, and then beret into this position. Did you ever hurt your left ankle? Uh, I don't think so. I'm you sure should. I rolled it a couple times. Yeah, but... it looks like you rolled it on this side. Maybe. But my right foot was the one that was always like injured. Really? Wow. Yeah. What, what did you do with it? So, um, I broke my second metatarsal, which is like right in the middle. So uh -huh. it was most painful, like right, right here. Uh -huh. And, um, I think I've rolled it a couple times too. Mm -hmm. Can you go to parallel? Yeah. And step up onto point. I mean, do you feel any pain right now? No. No. It's pretty. You have pretty strong ankles. I mean, like you haven't danced in so long. I know. Oh, <laughs> here it is. 